Welcome to your monthly update on the Covidence UK study. My name's Adrian Martineau. I'm based here at Queen Mary University of London. And with me today is a colleague of mine, Hajar Hajmohammadi, who will be telling us about the latest findings of our work on COVID-19 and pollution. Hajar, over to you. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, so as we now, since the beginning of the pandemic, many studies focused on identifying COVID-19 risk factors and they looked at a wide range of important factors such as demographic, social advantages, medical conditions and lifestyle. Beyond this typical risk factor, uh, environmental factors, especially air pollution, have drawn the attention of, uh, attention of uh, scientists working in this field. In the literature, there were a wide range of studies that shown positive association between air pollution exposure and incident of various respiratory viral infections, transmissibility of viruses, and uh, severity of disease caused by respiratory viruses. For COVID-19, air pollution exposure might plausibly increase risk of infection within these three categories. Long-term exposure, to pollution causes uh, asthma and COPD, which damage respiratory epithelium and weaken immune response. Short-term exposure may damage the physical epithelium barrier uh, or the immune response and uh, particles as a carrier. So COVID-19 might travel attached to particles and gain access uh, via inhaled particles. In this research, uh, we wanted to understand the impacts of long-term air pollution exposure on the risk of COVID-19. Uh, based on that, we defined two hypotheses. The first one was the positive association between long-term air pollution and risk of SARS-CoV-2 infection. And the second one was the positive association with the level of antibody response among those infected. Uh, to test our hypothesis, uh, we used serological test results of around 10,500 participants of the covid UK study and uh, then estimated the long-term air pollution exposure uh, with the uh, collaboration with uh, MRC Centre for Environment and Health at Imperial College London. Uh, we used adjusting factors such as demographic, uh, type of residence, uh, rural, city or conservation, and also some lifestyle factors. Uh, we used annual mean of NO2 and PM2.5 concentrations at the participants' postcode with a resolution of 25 square meters. Uh, from 20, 2015 to 2019, uh, we had the five-year annual mean, which we use as a long-term air pollution exposure in our study. So based on the information uh, we had, uh, we defined uh, three outcomes uh, for the statistical modeling. The first one was a binary outcome, presence versus absence of antibody against SARS-CoV-2 infection. So, uh, this outcome indicated whether or not uh, the participants had the virus. We developed multivariable logistic regression and also restricted cubic analysis uh, for this outcome. The other two outcomes uh, were for serology positive participants only, because uh, we wanted to know the effects of air pollution on the severity of COVID-19. Uh, we defined a continuous variable, uh, which is a magnitude, which is magnitude of antibody titer, and developed a linear regression model for that. Additionally, we defined a categorical variable to represent the severity of the disease. Uh, this variable had two categories: asymptomatic and sympathetic. So the sympathetic category included non-hospitalized participants uh, reporting symptoms of the uh, COVID plus participants hospitalized for treatment of COVID-19. So uh, we started with the binary outcome uh, of SARS-CoV-2 infection. I have here the results of a restricted cubic spline with three nodes, um, which indicated the nonlinear association 
between air pollution and risk of seropositivity. Uh, as you can see in these two graphs, for example, for NO2, uh, for the exposure greater than 15 microgram per cubic uh, meter, uh, we can see the risk of seropositivity was about 30% higher than the lower exposure. Uh, for PM2.5, uh, when the exposure is uh, greater than 10, again, we see that the risk of seropositivity was about 30% higher than the lower exposures. Uh, for the magnitude of antibody, uh, we used uh, quartiles of air pollution and antibody titers in seropositive participants only. In this analysis, we wanted to know the role of air pollution in severity of the disease. Uh, we developed uh, geometric um, mean ratios and 95 confidence intervals for log transform antibody titers uh, among, among uh, seropositive participants, as you can see in these figures. Based on these results, we can see a positive association between increased NO2 and PM2.5 exposure and higher levels of antibody titers. Uh, for the PM2.5 model, however, uh, this model was unable to reach the required level of a statistical significance, which was p-value less than uh, 0.05. Uh, I can summarize the results of this study into three main points. First, uh, our logistic regression model indicated that there was a nonlinear positive association between five-year NO2 and PM2.5 exposure and the risk of seropositivity. Secondly, in the seropositive participants, we found positive association between NO2 and antibody titers. However, we didn't find any evidence of association for PM2.5. Well, as a conclusion, I should mention that uh, this study supported yet another justification for the need to put policies to improve urban air quality in place, especially in London. Air pollution in the UK is still beyond the recommended limits, uh, which needs uh, immediate actions. In cities like London, a major source of air pollution is road transport. So restrictions policies such as uh, ultra low emission zones would be effective in reducing air pollution. The benefits of controlling air pollution would be in addition to reducing risk of NCDs such as asthma and COPD across the life course. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Hajar, for that excellent presentation. And thanks to all of you for your continued support for the study and for completing our monthly questionnaires, which continue to provide such valuable information on long term impacts of COVID-19. From all of us here at Covidence UK, until next month, goodbye.